Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Art of Passive Income podcast, I am so excited to share with you one of our star students, Matt Nunn. And I love these podcasts because when we can really delve deeply into one of our clients or students' experience, you can gain so much insight and experience for yourself and apply it to your own business and smart cut what they have done. So without further ado, Matt Nunn, how are you? I'm good. I'm nervous, but we're good. No, no reason to be nervous. In fact, <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you a second. Today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks and transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, and efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. He's done it thousands of times. You're going to make that uh, Flight School tuition back 180 days or less. So it's not going to cost you anything. Guaranteed. So learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Matt Nunn, let's just, let's just, Skip the pleasantries. Uh, what brought you to land investing? Um, so I, I graduated college in a, a great job market, 09. Um, my uh, department had like a 99.5 literal like job placement. And um, only three of us found jobs. But um, after uh, maybe five or 10 years of a corporate job, I knew it wasn't, wasn't what I wanted to do. What, what were you started. doing? Um, I was in purchasing, so I was working for a family uh, company. It was a manufacturing facility making epoxy insulators. And when the family owned it, it was awesome. And they were bought out by a huge conglomerate. So I went from one of 70 employees to like 10,000 overnight. And wow. um, and they had plans for me. And they uh, it was a great place to work, but it just wasn't what I wanted. Um I had started an ATM route, so uh, I had an ATM business that I was running. Um, that got to a point where I could quit that job and do ministry. Um, and so uh, ATM investing is probably not the safest for having kids and a, a young family. Yeah. So uh, I knew I needed to do something different, and I had been listening to your podcast since back in the day, um, probably since 2016, so a long, long time. And uh, had started flipping land, started with a thousand bucks and um, uh, just sold the ATM business and went all in on land and um, love it now. My wife quit her job and she's full time in it too. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, I love the fact that you're able to replace your wife's income so that she could quit her job, spend mm -hmm. more time with the family. And that's really the whole mm -hmm. idea of getting out of solo economic dependency is so that you can do the things you want to do in life and have that that freedom. So I'd be remiss if I just didn't even ask you, like, what's been your favorite deal? Um, I think everybody likes their first deal. I bought it for a thousand dollars. Felt like I had sent too much mail. Um, bought it for a thousand dollars and sold it in a week for two grand cash. Um, and a thousand dollars at the time was a lot of money for us. Um, and so first deal is always one that I love, but I bought 120 acres for, um, less than a hundred bucks an acre. Like, I mean, it was like an $1,800 total purchase for 120 acres. Um, wow. So that was probably my favorite. What, what'd you make on that deal? Um, I sold it for around 20, uh, on terms. Wow. That's, that's a great deal for everybody. He just paid off, so that was a sad day. Because <laughs> it was a good reminder of like the business work, you know. Like every time he would pay, never late. Um, but um, I'll find another one. So. That's a, that's amazing. That's amazing. Let's talk about your coaching and coaching experience. Why is coaching valuable to you? Um. So I was established in the business before I got into coaching. Um, the the year before coaching, I'd done a about 200 sales um but uh i knew if we were gonna make my wife go full-time and spend time with the family that it was kind of counterintuitive but investing in coaching was 
really important to us to to get to the next step. It was good to have someone to bounce ideas off of and um, kind of didn't know what I was doing wrong in the business. So Tate was really good at um, gently nudging me in the right direction. Um, but uh, I couldn't have scaled faster and, and higher than I ever thought I could without coaching. So it, I mean, if Tiger Woods, best golfer in the world, has a coach, I think I, I need one too and probably everybody else. Yeah, yeah. And so what has been the result of that 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 year with Tate? How's mm-hmm. how's your business scaled up and, and grown? So um uh volume wise, it's uh 50% up from an already established business. So um 50% up, my notes are are almost double what they were before I started. Um, and I'm working so much less. So that's, that's been the biggest benefit is I was probably working 20 or 30 hours a week on top of a full-time ministry job. And, uh, um, some days I don't work, uh, my, we were sick over Christmas break and my team didn't even know it because <laughs> I hadn't checked in with them, but it was kind of the same thing. I'm probably doing 30 minutes a day maybe. So that's a lot different than 30 hours a week. So. so 30 minutes a day from 30 hours a week. And how many deals did you do in 2022? Um, I, I did over 300. Over 300. Wow. Yep. Yep. That's, that's just incredible. That's incredible. So how, how do you measure success for your business? I think everybody measures it differently. Um, I've been tracking deals for a long time and now I've been tracking my my note portfolio and um and watching it grow so tracking that but uh, uh lately I've not to be too woo woo but um being more present with my family is how I've been tracking it um business is still growing you know we've had a good start to the year uh despite whatever recession may or may not be out there um so I think being present with my family you know having Christmas off and the business still working you know, no, kind of hard think, to measure that, but that's definitely it. Yeah, no, I, I'm so jealous because I remember when I had started the land business and I'd quit my investment banking job and I had no mentor and I had no awareness of how distracted I was. So I'd be deluding myself. I take my kids to the park mm-hmm. and I thought, Oh, I'm the only dad at the park. It's the middle of the day. And yet mm-hmm. I'm at the park and I keep checking my email mm-hmm. and yeah. seeing about my customers. So I'm, I'm there, but I'm not really there. Mm-hmm. And I had, I wish that I could go back in time and be totally present with those, those kids and that, mm-hmm. that precious time that I'll, I'll never get back. And what, a, what a gift and, and what a special way to, mm-hmm. to measure true success because mm-hmm that that parenting that you're giving your kids that is your legacy and mm-hmm. that lives beyond you so mm-hmm. another deal is not going to really move the needle uh, as much as that growing developing yeah. relationship where the kids feel like oh dad truly was was mm-hmm. with us when he was with us that's mm-hmm. that's amazing um getting back to your 30 minutes a week in the business. What Dang, role yeah. have you outsourced that had the most impact on you? Um, before coaching, uh, around 200 deals, I uh, had had one or two VAs. Um, so my my intake manager was was my game changer for sure. Um, it's so exhausting talking to sellers, you know. Yeah, um, and she's good at it. She's better at it than me. Um, and uh, Post coaching, I'd say probably my sales manager. That was the last thing I I wanted to outsource. Um, I felt like I was the best at it, and um, it's pretty selfish to think that you're the best at everything. So once it kind of hit me, um, sales manager I got now. His first week, he sold like seven properties, and I was like, okay, cool. I worked even less. Like this is this is real. Like I should have listened to Tate six months ago. Um, but uh, yeah, so probably intake manager and sales manager, um, and then from there bookkeeper because I'm a a numbers Excel guy. But the, my books are way cleaner than that I could have ever done them, and um, he's doing them. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I always joke when you when you get that first intake manager, colors are more vibrant, food tastes better. <laughs> it's just everything's better when you get that off your plate. But when sure. you and we always talk about at boot camp, the the two things you outsource last mm-hmm. are county research and sales. And so mm-hmm. I, I like the fact that you got to a point where you were able to fully work on the business and totally be and, and mm-hmm. totally be, and just get yourself out of it completely with that sales manager. It's true. Mm-hmm. There's always someone out there that's going to do it better than you mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. as the CEO, you might be the best salesperson, but you you don't scale. And right, as a yeah. CEO, you want to scale and grow mm-hmm. and, and do that. I, I always think of you know Steve Jobs, who's a great sales guy, but you wouldn't want him at the Apple store selling your, your Mac. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, more valuable. Sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you know, how did you get out of your comfort zone? Because that's that's really where the growth occurs. What what do you what do you do? Um. So, I mean, I think coaching was was out of my comfort zone for me. Just to, why, to join. why do you say that? Um, it, it was an investment, um, and it was also opening up my business to someone. Um, so it was. I mean, there's some some vulnerable points of it, and um, uh, I mean, I, I showed Tate a lot of the business that I um, had kind of kept to myself for a long time, and um, kind of having. Uh, what's the phrase whenever you you jump off the cliff and build it on the way down you know like that's kind of how I had approached it and I had a lot of pride in how how good my business was and you know Tate showed me hey it, it can be better if you do this or this or um Eric would laugh but um he he looked through my my systems and and I said okay well I'll, I'll do better next time <laughs> like um <laughs> but I felt like I'd really um, opened up and, and showed them everything that man it's so much better having them guys dial it in and um and kind of give vision on what it uh what it could be you know um I think I had dreamed as far as I could dream and, and those guys that had helped show me how it could be better but that was that was really uncomfortable I mean it's just not my personality to be on this podcast or to um to show someone what I'm working on I kind of keep to myself and introvert but um Definitely coaching. And I'm glad I did it. Like, uh, it, it wouldn't be where it's at now if it wasn't for, for you guys. That's awesome. Well, well, thank you. We, we appreciate that. And I know the whole team has, has loved working with you. And for us, it's, it's exciting to see that type of improvement and growth because mm-hmm. most of our clients don't come in with an established business, you know, mm-hmm. already doing 200 deals. And so for us to take that challenge on, and say, okay, we can help you do even more deals in mm. less and work less mm-hmm. is uh, is especially gratifying. So that's mm. that that was an amazing gift for us. Uh, who would you recommend should look into coaching based on your experience? Um, I think if you're if you're on the fence, it's it's certainly worth the conversation, if nothing else. Um, but if you if you've been in the business or if you're interested in real estate in general, I think. Um, I think it would work. I should have been coaching probably two or three years ago. Um, so I would say anybody that is, is interested in, in growing it, you know, if you've got to listen in the bigger pockets or something, if you're interested in real estate and kind of don't know where to start, I think land is like the gateway drug to, um, to doing different stuff. So I think, uh, if you're interested, it's, it's worth a phone call for sure. I love that. I love that. So if you were to start over today, what would you do differently and what would you do the same? Um, so I guess same. Uh let me start with that. I would uh I would start slow like I like I did with with one deal, thousand dollars. I bought three properties that first month and freaked out, quit mailing because I had too much, and then I stole it all in two weeks and had to restart. So that's probably what I would do different is uh I would, you know, follow the recipe and mail 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 and don't slow down your mailing um and uh there's nothing that says you have to scale at a certain speed um you know i I scaled really slow and and wish i'd have scaled a little quicker 
for the past two years, I've scaled really fast and, um, and that that's expensive. And, uh, that's also a lot of work. Um, and it, it's worth it, but, um, scale at your own pace. Don't, don't let someone else define your success. I, I'd say, um, scale how you want to scale. Okay, great. Great. What, what has been the, the hardest thing in the business for you? Um, probably learning my new role, you know, like working on and not in my business, you know, yeah. um, I bought 25 properties through title, uh, last week. And I told my wife, I haven't looked at any of them. I don't know what they look like. And, um, it's a different mindset. Like it, it, it takes a different set of skills to not let, not that I've like gained wealth, but it takes a different set of skills to like gain wealth versus keep wealth. Right. Or like scale art versus like maintaining, I guess. And sometimes it feels like I'm herding cats with my assistants, you know, but um, I'm more like working on it and not in it. And that's been hard to, to let go. Like, especially that sales manager, that was really hard to, to give him the keys and, and trust him um, after enough training or, or whatever. But that's definitely been the hardest thing for sure. Yeah, that that is a challenge. But I love the fact that you said you gave him the keys after enough training. Yeah. Because one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is there's a big difference between abdicating and delegating. Abdicating mm -hmm. is kind of the blind leading the blind. And you just, <laughs> yeah. you know, you want to get to that point where someone who's listening to this podcast, they just want to be you. They're like, okay, here, you take the mm -hmm. sales role over. But they haven't been mm -hmm. properly trained. And mm -hmm. the person that's that's advocating hasn't done it enough themselves to even train properly mm -hmm. and so there there is that that distinction and it's very subtle so mm, for sure to good. keep your your sanity and to sleep well at night you definitely want to delegate and not not abdicate uh, so if you're talking to a beginner in this business what advice would you give them from a, from a mindset standpoint, maybe even tactically? Um, so I think uh, pay attention to the details. I, I was really good at details early on. And when I started scaling, right before coaching, I got sloppy. Um, and I was chasing volume and not, you know, not perfection, but um, excellence, I guess, would be be a better word for it. It's like, I'm going to butcher it. I know Scott Todd would, would know it like the aviation 60 to one rule where yeah. uh, if you're one degree off and in, in 60 miles, you'll be a mile off. Um, you know, I had, I had grown some really bad habits that I didn't even know we had. Um, from, Can you give an example being, of, of one of those bad habits? Oh man. Um, I don't know where to start. Um, <laughs> it's, it's first terrible. bad habit that comes to mind. <laughs> terrible, terrible to admit on, a recorded call, but um, double selling properties was like a huge thing for us. Like um, when my it, wife started in the business, she was fresh set of eyes, but equally invested in it, you know, so she was not sloppy. And her first month, she found 10 properties that um, had defaulted that I forgot we owned 10 or 15 properties. And I was like, that's awesome. Like she, she found like 20 or 30 grand, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, just not being detailed and accidentally double selling something is like super embarrassing, you know. Um, so those two things being super transparent would be uh, worse mistakes, probably. It's so funny you say that because when I first started, I was working on an Excel spreadsheet. There's no mm -hmm. LG pass. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, Excel, like, it's it's hard to see sometimes. So I would double sell properties. And I would get that notice in the mail mm -hmm. from the from the assessor saying and the hey. customer gets it too. And right. The customer gets it too. Yeah. And I was like, oh no. And what happened was it, it turned out like, okay, as as soon as I owned up to the mistake with the customer mm -hmm. and told them how I would resolve it, they were like mm -hmm. the best customer. Yeah. 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 It's like it was like it was like the weirdest it works out good it yeah. works out really well as, as if you handle yeah. it well so yeah. uh and you yeah. just give them something better than the property you had you know like I'll, I'll give you an acre instead of half acre or you know like whatever 
Um, maybe that's not what you do, but that's that's what I've done if they was ever not happy. But um, most people understand, you know. Yeah, no, people are really cool about it. And then they're so appreciative when, when you resolve it quickly, especially when you do it the way you're doing it, where you, they get even a better deal. And then mm-hmm. just that loyalty is fostered by a mistake. It's mm-hmm. it's a really interesting phenomenon. I'm not telling people to go purposely make mistakes, <laughs> but it, it yeah. turns out when, when you do, it's not as bad as you think. And I was going to say, I don't do that a lot. So. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You only do it a couple of times before you learn. No, for sure. All right. So Matt, here is my last question. Mm -hmm. How has this business changed your life? Um, man, I, uh, my wife quit her, her full-time job. She was a cancer nurse and then she became a school nurse when we started to have a family. Uh, and she said the only thing more depressing than, uh, you know, being a cancer nurse was being a COVID nurse because the school nurses turned into COVID protocols. Um, so being able to retire her gave us such a different flexibility. And then the business growing to where um, ministry is different. Like if if a new pastor took over our church, um, it's it's typical that everyone would resign and then get rehired. Um, and so there's um, our church has a long history of having long term pastors, but gives you a peace of mind knowing we could make this work, you know, um, just, it's okay. Like we, we got this. Um, so it's, it's given my, my family breathing room and the ability to, you know, go on a trip if we want to, or, you know, whatever. Um, so it's just improved our family quality of life and, uh, been able to, to let my wife and I be better parents, you know, not like you said, be glued to your phone at the park or something. Like, I, I think that maybe, maybe your, your biggest contribution in this world isn't what you do, but it's who you raise, you know? And, um, and I think that, that it's enabled us to, to be those parents. So for sure. I, I love that. I love that line. Your biggest contribution in this world isn't what you do, but it's who you raise. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so Matt, your, your mentorship has been phenomenal this podcast, but you know, it's coming. <laughs> one more tip of the week a website a resource a book something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses improve their lives what have you got so um i've got two that's okay they're and they're quick but um first uh one of the most successful guys in, in my area i um met him and was uh just having some good conversations with him and he gave me a book that is not on Audible. It's it's probably like an old school Zig Ziglar type of book, but it's um, success is not an accident. And success will, is not an accident. I'll check it out. So it's like a bluish cover. I don't have it here. There's like a bluish greenish cover, um, and it's good at just like is that Tommy Newberry? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. New. Yeah. Blue cover. Very cool. It's Seventeen bucks on Amazon. So, yeah, I mean, it's probably super old school, but um, but it's timeless in that it just shows you what's important in life and and helps you kind of prioritize um, who you are, what you do, why you do it. You know, you're working hard for your family, but you're not present with your family, like you said, or or, or whatever. Um, and then my, my second. Um, I, uh, I, I'm hesitant to say it, but this would be just what has changed my life. And that's taking a Sabbath. So um, if, if you're not a Christian, still taking a day off, yeah. Um, you know, uh, working, working church work and working this business, even though it's easy, it's, it's always on, you're always getting sales at different time and organizing stuff. Um, and I, I, I literally set a, a focus on my iPhone where I don't have any notifications on Sunday. So I, I I'm allowed to check it once or twice to just, to make sure there's nothing on fire in the business. But um, that Sabbath is important for just unplugging. And um, the iPhone hack is is sweet. Like I have a different wallpaper on my phone just as a reminder, like, hey, today's different, you know. So, yeah. um, you know, taking a Sabbath. And if if you're a Christian, then, you know, you, you know that you're supposed to take a Sabbath, but sometimes we still don't because uh, – probably a lot of people that listen to this show or like podcast junkies always listening to something, always reading something audible, always working on something. And 
your brain needs room to to breathe you know so um, so i'm better from from keeping that and i think that um no matter what you what you believe or what you do i think a day off um scheduled intentional is really important and i think you're better for it i i think that's great advice and i just got back from africa and so nice. i'm in, i'm in africa and uh -huh. i'm at this area that has no wi-fi Mm. There's just no, there's just no there's just no internet. I mean, in Botswana, there's no LTE. Mm -hmm. I mean, just completely <laughs> off the grid for three days, and mm -hmm. I can't tell you what a difference it had made for me mentally. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I thought, okay, I want more of that. How do I get more of that? And so mm -hmm. the digital Sabbath has been it was just so fantastic. There's just too many inputs. Mm -hmm. And so what I've been doing now is when I go to bed, I put my phone on airplane mode so mm -hmm. that when I wake up, I can't check the internet or I can't check mm -hmm. email. It's just that, that that one extra step is just a reminder. Oh, wait, go and do your, your morning routine first yeah. and then do work. And then on Sundays now, I am just going to have a complete digital Sabbath and mm -hmm. take those long walks that I love to do. No phone. Uh, the other thing I want to do is when I'm out with friends, leave my phone in the car. When I'm out mm -hmm. with family, That's you know, leave the phone in the car. And that way I just, it's not even distracting to me. Now I have the, the Apple watch. So I do feel like, Oh, if there is some kind of emergency, there's never really an emergency. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I remember listening to this Chris rock, uh, stand up and he's like when i was a kid the house could burn down my dad wouldn't find out until he got home <laughs> it's true it's, like, that's so true you and know the world, the world worked it still and worked. the world the world still worked and everything got done and it's just too many inputs for our our caveman brain the the hardware is not caught up with we software weren't wired we just, for that we weren't wired to to be advertised to 24 7 and you can't give what you don't have, you know, so you got it. And um, I'm sure you're a better um, business owner for it. You know, um, I'm sure, I'm sure your team appreciates you having time off, you know? Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, my team was like, don't come back. Like whenever I'm on vacation, <laughs> we, yeah. we kill it. They're like, don't it's come better back. without you. <laughs> it, it really is. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's the most humbling thing, but it, it's, it's so true. And, and you'll see this next year, and you're probably already seeing it when you have that strong team, you have those systems and processes mm -hmm. and that machine is automated. It's, it's really your job just to think and break stuff. Like you'll, you'll be on a walk, you'll mm -hmm. be with your family, you'll have this thought like, wh what if we did this? And then everything's working you just break it. Mm -hmm. and you see, and that's how you, you get to that, that next level. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, Matt, thank you so much. I want to, remind the listeners that the only way that a guy like Matt Nunn is going to come on the podcast and share his experience, transfer that wisdom to you so that you can smart cut your own business is if you do us three favors, follow, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review, support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you for free a signed copy of Dirt Rich. So please do it. All right, Matt. Oh, by oh, by the way, my tip of the week, Frank Steve mentioned it. Go to nun n u n n landsales.com and check out what Matt's doing. Nunlandsales.com. All right, Matt, are you ready to do this? Yeah. One, two, three. Let's let freedom, freedom ring. Ring. All right. Thank you so much, Matt. I, I really appreciate, appreciate you taking it. the time. Uh Pleasure, that was Mark. great. Thank All right, thanks, to, thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.